the Actor CEO Podcast, Episode 77. Going up. You're an actor, but you're also a business. Take control of your career by learning how to manage it like a boss. Be driven. Be responsible. Be in control. Be an actor CEO. And now, your host, Mike Moreno. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Actor CEO Podcast. Thank you for joining me on this journey of learning, exploration, and dedication. If you want to keep getting tips and tricks from industry pros, established actors, and hardworking artists, make sure you subscribe to this podcast. That way, when you're on the go to your next audition, commuting home from work, or at the gym, you can take a moment to listen and get some serious insight into building a better career by becoming an actor CEO. If you want to show your love for this show and all the amazing info we get from our guests, head to Act. ActorCEO.com slash resources to buy your next book on acting, your next piece of self-tape gear, or your next awesome video series like Acting Shakespeare. You're going to make that purchase anyway, and this way you can show a little support for this podcast you love and all the people that make it happen. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and I cannot wait to keep delivering great guests and outstanding info on how to treat your career like a business throughout the year. Now back to the show. What's up, actors? I'm so excited to bring on my guest today. He is specializing in voiceover as a casting director and has been doing so for the past two decades. And after many years as the in-house casting director for CESD, one of the country's top commercial talent agencies, he struck out on his own. And since then, he has been working for many of the biggest advertising agencies, casting houses, and production companies in the world. And in his career, he has served as casting director on thousands of projects, ranging from commercials to animated films and television series to documentaries and video games. And also, as an award-winning producer, his most recent animated projects called Enchanted Time, the Delicious Adventure series, and the the Peculiar Adventures of Willow B. Star, for which he served as both writer and producer, they gained him national attention and prestigious, or the two prestigious awards here, 2016 and 2017, the Telly Awards. His first short film, The Lovers, starring Stephen Ogg from Westworld, you recognize him from Walking Dead, Grand Theft Auto, and Chris Phillips, who you'll recognize from Ice Age and Max Payne, a video game, has picked up has been picked up for global distribution by Hypnotic. Now, he then went on to work with The Daily Show writer J.R. Havlin to co-produce the Catskill Chainsaw Redemption. And he's also a fantastic teacher and coach. He's got a teaching resume that boasts, you know, three of the Hollywood Reporter's top-rated colleges uh, in terms of acting and is a faculty member with the New York University's famed Tisch School and is a regular guest artist and speaker at many highly regarded acting programs uh, around the country, including Rutgers and Syracuse. His voiceover workshops sell out months in advance, so we will tell you about where to find out more information on that at the end of the show. And he has been twice voted the best voiceover teacher in New York by Backstage. So I'm very thrilled to bring Andy <laughs> Roth to the show. Andy, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. Wow, that's it. I think that maybe sounds more impressive than it really is but uh <laughs> no I, I think it's i think it's fair <laughs> to say you. that it's impressive man i mean you've got a lot of credits and that's why i wanted to throw all this in there because it's not just about uh teaching it's not just about your work as a casting director but you know your familiarity with the um the the casting world uh working with a a top agent uh, in the field here, and also, of course, producing and writing. So you've seen the voiceover world from just about every perspective you can. And uh, I think that's why you're such a valuable resource. And uh, certainly, I believe, one of the uh, one of the experts in the field that we all, you know, should definitely um, have access to. And I appreciate you coming on the show. No, oh, thanks. Uh, I, I'm flattered. <laughs> yeah, so, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, thanks. of course. So, um, so let's fire off, like, right away, you know, uh, you do, okay. of course, uh, help coach actors. You do uh, do workshops and things like that. Um, and mm-hmm. also, you know, you help produce people's reels and, and put stuff together. So you really help introduce people who are new to the voiceover um, ecosystem into what it means to actually have the proper materials and the proper understanding about what voiceover really is in order to compete in this field uh, at a professional level. Is that right? Uh, yeah, and thanks. Um, and I actually think ecosystem is, I've never heard anybody refer to it like that, but I actually think it's great. Um, because it is, it's a whole complete 
little world within the entertainment world by and large. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot to it. And, uh, yeah, there's a whole, it's built on relationships. It's built on preparations, being able to enter into connections with whoever you're in the room with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I love it. I fell in love with the voiceover world 20 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when other people like it, I really want to help them do it. I think it has a lot to offer. And it's also an incredibly friendly branch of the industry. Oh, well, that's amazing to hear. Uh, <laughs> Because that's always nice uh, to work in a place yeah, where is. people are like, oh, yeah, we genuinely, you know, appreciate uh, this part of the business. Um, mm -hmm. So what would you say would be maybe the top three things that you can think of, Andy, that uh, someone coming into the voiceover market, that maybe the misconceptions that you've seen. So people are like, oh, I think I understand the voiceover industry. I certainly want to be a part of it. But they come into a booth or they come into a workshop and you're like, yeah, these are generally the top misconceptions that people have about the voiceover industry. Um, well, number one, and I honestly think any casting director, teacher, anybody in the business would tell you, voiceover has nothing to do with your voice. <clears throat> um, I know it seems weird, but I get a lot of people that uh, have heard that, oh, you have a great voice. Right. Um, usually they have a depth or an unusual quirky quality, and they hear from their friends, you should do voiceover. Mm -hmm. um, voiceover, voice is a genetic trait. It's, you know, acting your voice is like acting your height. You know, it just, it is what it is. Uh, no matter what your voice is like, there are always going to be other people out there with a very similar voice, which is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. If your voice was that unusual and nobody had ever heard it before, nobody's going to know to write anything for it. What That's voiceover is really about is personality. Mm. You know, it's... um it's about bringing yourself to it. As an actor, you are the human element of a script. You are the bridge, whether it's voiceover or on camera uh, or stage. You are the bridge between printed words on a page and a human audience that needs to connect with other humans in the context. Right. A voice might be interesting, but I could get a computer to do an interesting voice and it would have more range right uh what i need is personality and life mm. that so a misconception would be sorry for the long-winded answer a, a misconception would be that just having a good voice is enough mm. Mm -hmm. that yeah. would be one uh yeah oh sorry go ahead well, yeah, I would just think, I mean, that that was true for me coming in. I mean, I see that with a lot of people and certainly in workshops that I've taken. Uh, that was That's always been one of the big bridges people have to cross is like, yes, okay, you have a quality to your voice, but there's so much more to reading copy and trying to convey uh, the story that is happening to someone who's only able to encounter that story or experience it through audio. And so there's a, mm -hmm. there's a, a need for personality as you say and storytelling uh capabilities in order to get that uh get that message across yeah yeah and that's probably the biggest misconception um another one would be that people think it's a great little side job to make a few thousand extra bucks while they're doing their other job right. it's not that it's a career it right. is it is a whole full-time career and even if you are one of the lucky few that can have the other job and occasionally do voiceover. Those mm. people are out there. It takes an awful long time to get to that place where that's even an option for you. Sure. And it's a job. It's a full-time job. Um, that would be one. It's, and this is one that's kind of weird. I don't know that a lot of people would think of it as a misconception, mm. but a lot of people come to me and they're like, you know, how do I break in? And breaking in is a weird way of phrasing it because nobody's trying to keep you out. You know, there's right. nobody blocking entry. Uh, it's really, it's about being in front of as many people as you can, letting people know you. In this business, it's not who you know. It's who knows you. Right. And auditions, classes, um, seminars, environments where you can be around other people with common interests and be known as a person in this business is going to move you forward. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think most of the industry, um, acting, voiceover acting, um, 
is really certainly built on relationships and and spending mm-hmm. the time to find the, the other people who are working in this industry, meet them and and spend the time to grow that relationship, not think as you mentioned, that there's a breaking point. There's a point where you can just like mm-hmm. insert yourself or meet the right person at the right time and boom, you're in. That's, you know, that doesn't really happen. That's like seeing a meteor, okay? But the rest of the stars yeah, are right. still out there shining, okay? So, you know, that mm-hmm. may be special, but and that may but that's a very unique thing and a very rare thing and actually not something that you can build a career on. The way that you do it right. is through spending the time in the right places. So this would be certainly something that I would love to dive into, which is, that that side of the industry building that uh, spending the right time in the right places i guess which is what we're really mm-hmm. talking about so there's a number of places as you mentioned workshops uh you know the auditions that you either may go to in person or even some of them that are now um happening online so where would you say would mm-hmm. be the best places for somebody to who is just coming into the industry or even someone who's trying to build it up like they have a reel and now they're ready to go uh and really start ramping up the audition side of things where would where should they be investing their time that's a great question um honestly first there's a, a lot of different places you can go you definitely should be online you should have your website you should you know be available and you should be able to audition from home but at the end of the day there's no substitute for just human to human contact two right. people in a room one thing that I, I liken auditioning to, people think auditioning is a test. It's really, really not. As a casting director, I don't make that final decision mm-hmm. as far as who gets the job. I might have varying degrees of input, but I don't make the final decision. I am in the unique position, which is why I love what I do, that I, I can appreciate each person on their individual terms as themselves. I can choose what I think are your best takes from an audition, mm-hmm. but I don't pick the quote best one unquote that's somebody else's job Um, and everything that I do the people that I call in the connections that I make they're all built on human to human contact and audition is a way for the two of us to connect with a common goal and a common interest over a script Mm. is really what it is Um, the more you could simulate that kind of environment I find classes are great and if you don't want to take a five week or whatever some of them can get very expensive um at least like uh get into a room with uh, in a one-off situation and uh meet the agent situation and meet the casting director situation i say thoroughly vet everyone you're getting in front of um you want to find people that need what you have to offer so talk Mm. to people that are like you and who they've met and what degrees of success they have be prepared ask about the person if you know somebody else who's been in a room with them what kind of feedback did you get did they like your copy did they not like your copy right Um, be as prepared as you can to engage in that human human contact Um, auditions will often, not always, nobody can promise, but auditions will often come from that. It's If I've called somebody in, it's because I know them to a certain extent. Right. Or at least to the extent that I need to. That's why I'm a big advocate of getting in a room with somebody. Um, as far as getting out there in other sources, I know that there are online sites. There is uh, Voices.com. There is Voice123.com. I know that there are some others. Um I know people that audition, book jobs, and get paid from these sites. Mm. You know, work is out there. Um, And I'm sure as technology and the business moves forward and develops and home studios are getting better and better, more opportunities for that kind of thing are showing up. It's uh, it's like the lottery. You've got to be in it to win it. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And, and, you know, and I've seen it – very rarely, but uh, come across, you know, whether it's Actors Access or even uh, Backstage and things like that, I have seen um, and auditioned for projects that have come through there. Uh, And, you know, something I'll point out, too, uh, (laughs) considering the medium that we're talking through right now, podcasts are another (laughs) great uh, place for actors and uh, voiceover artists to really try and put themselves out there. If you're listening to podcasts, if if you see some things coming down the pipe, if you hear people talking about trying to produce one, Voiceover actors are are quite useful uh, in that field. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I have an actress who I hired to do the intro for this 
podcast. And uh, of course, myself, uh, uh, am a, you know, talent on it, I guess, if you will. But there's the storytelling aspect. There's a lot of other styles, not just the interview style that are coming to light. And audio is really going to be a growing field there. So people may want to pay attention to that as a possible market for themselves too, not oh, just commercials, not just, you know, um, voiceover for television or animation or anything like that. That yeah. market is going to be growing uh, very quickly, very yeah. shortly. Agencies are even starting whole divisions to deal with person, podcast personalities, YouTube personalities. You yeah, this is this is the new paradigm. I love it. And oh, the oh, beauty yeah. of it is you can listen to it anytime you want, wherever you want. You could pause it. You can mm -hmm. um, and pick exactly. it up later. It, yeah, no, it's 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 a great medium. I'm I'm a little bit addicted to podcasts actually. <laughs> Masterclass is an online learning service that gives you access to acting classes with these master actors for just 90 bucks. You can't even rent rehearsal space in New York City for that much, and you get hours of exclusive footage you won't find anywhere else, worksheets and templates, and a community forum to connect you with other passionate performers. This is access you can't find elsewhere, and the knowledge that these titans of film and stage deliver in these courses is priceless. Click the link on the homepage at ActorCEO.com or find it on the resources page at actorceo.com slash resources. Don't miss your chance to learn from the greats. Now back to the show. Again, I mean, because they're so user friendly and uh, the technology is going to get to the point where, you know, you can take them with you anywhere. And in terms of uh, revenue uh, on the business side of things, the uh, businesses are very happy with them because once you put an ad in there, it's there forever. And uh, mm -hmm. depending on the type of podcast, if it's something like a story based type of thing where you have to start from A in order to get to Z, um, then you're going to have people who are downloading the entire series all of the time mm -hmm. because that's what you need to do in order to walk through the story. And so that's very yeah. powerful and it's very um, lucrative for them. So it's going to become mm -hmm. a business model that I think is going to grow quite uh, quite mm -hmm. fast. So, oh, yeah. um, so moving on now, uh, so you've been able to build some relationships, you've been able to do some auditions, and you've actually been able to book a couple things. What are some of the pointers that you have, Andy, when someone comes into the booth? You know, there's a difference between reading. I mean, there may or may not be, depending on what it is, but there's a, a difference between reading, you know, a Pepsi Cola spot that's got about, you know, uh, you know, uh, 15, 25 <laughs> words in it. And then, you know, as we were just talking about, maybe something that's a little bit more storytelling based, like an animation, mm -hmm. like uh, maybe a narration or something, uh, an educational type thing, where there are certain bits that need to be highlighted in certain elements and uh, maybe not so much in others. What would you recommend as an actor when I get the sides? Okay, now I've booked the thing. What are the best ways for me to perform my best with that material in the booth? Uh, this is, I, I actually love this question because there are a lot of different answers for it. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of different things mm. and everything everyone has said is right, but it's also wrong. Mm. To be honest, I would say at this point, you've really got to know yourself. Um, the way you may need to prepare for one script might be very different than the way you need to prepare for another. You may look at a script that's a little shorter. You remember the audition. You booked it. You just kind of clicked with it. Maybe you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to step away from this. I know the clients. They're going to tell me what to do anyway. I'm going to go in there, follow my instincts, and then take redirection as they give it. Right. Other things like an audio book. You've done. You, you've auditioned for it. The author liked you. You've done your first fifteen minutes. Sent it to them. They've given you notes to go back and re-record or continue with. Mm -hmm. um, that might take more preparation because you're dealing with accents. You're dealing with characters. You're dealing with playing a sixty-five-year-old man and an eight-year-old girl. And there's yeah. ways that you need to to deal with that. Do the amount of preparation that's right for you. Only the and only. To that extent, I do see people run into problems over preparing. Oh, okay. Um, Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah, they really burn a read into their head. They say, This is the oh, word yeah. I'm always going to hit, and this is the way I'm going to say it. And what happens is it gets a little harder to take direction. Um, their personality starts to come out of it because they're so focused on the non human, on the technical. 
yeah. that they start to lose the human. Um, I have to say, personally, I've really definitely experienced that myself. And it's hard sometimes because you're preparing with nobody else. I mean, it's just you trying mm -hmm. to get these things down. And then you get right. into the room and there's kind of this time pressure or whatever. But, you know, mm -hmm. now you got to, like, deliver. And, uh, you know, I'm sure every actor out there understands that uh, those those challenges. Yeah. And it is tricky, too, because preparation is great if it's moving you forward, if it's making it easier, simpler, more adaptable, faster. Right. At a certain point, preparation can start holding you back. I hear um, actors talk about they judge themselves or they're being judged. What they really mean is being convicted because nobody, is, nobody thinks they're being acquitted when they use that word. <laughs> Um, and people will be reading and suddenly that voice starts to kick in of this doesn't feel like it did before. This isn't right. So I don't think they like this. I don't think they're giving them what they want. If your preparation gets to that point where you're comparing it to something else you've done in another place, mm -hmm. that's too much. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Um, as a casting director or a director or a producer, I will tell you once you're done, Whatever, and you know, you're an actor. No matter what you do, we're going to tell you to do something different anyway. It's just our relationship. Right. Um, but people start to worry about what they believe they're doing and how it's being received when they're not experiencing it the way I am. Even people who audition at home, which is a lot of the business in the voiceover world, mm -hmm. don't don't direct while you're acting. Record it. Act the way you feel you need to do it and then listen back so you're hearing it like other people. And then you could say, I want it faster or slower. This joke didn't play or, you know, hey, God forbid, that was amazing. I'm glad I recorded it and I'm sending it off. There's nothing wrong with appreciating what you do also. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, acting, act while you're acting and direct uh, afterwards. <laughs> I mean, that's, yes. uh, that's going to be so much, uh, make it so much easier on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, direct the future, not the past. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, hey, that's a that's a ton of yeah, that's a ton of great info there. Um, Thanks. So, so Andy, so now let you know again. There's a lot of opportunity out there. Just as we've just mentioned, you know, a lot of agencies and other other places are certainly looking into other parts of the audio market. So, you know, I I believe, and I think you know, you'd probably agree that that the industry is growing in certain ways. However, mm -hmm. you know, many of us have noticed, you know, I mean, you know, it's hard it's hard to find a car commercial or whatever that doesn't have a celebrity voice attached to it or or um, you know, new animated series coming out that have, you know, comedians and things like that. And maybe, you know, sometimes it feels like there's not a lot of uh opportunity for just your everyday voiceover person. That's not necessarily true, but it may mm -hmm. seem like um that's the case. So if somebody has yeah. their reel, somebody's put some time into start to develop even credits and things like that, but they don't necessarily have representation. Um, first of all, mm -hmm. do you need representation in order to get yourself out there into the marketplace? And if you don't, how do you go, go about doing that? And if you, if representation is useful, um, what would you say would be the best ways to reach out to those people and to ensure that you're putting your best foot forward and showing them your best work? And also that, you know, um, you're, you're kind of the right fit for them. Right, right. Um, well, I mean, whether or not you're the right fit for them is going to be as much their say sure. as yours. Right. You know, put yourself out there. Um, and I'm not going to lie, it's easier with representation, but there are plenty of people that do it without. If you put yourself out there, you're getting work, you're talking to other people, you're booking things. This right. business, even outside of voiceover, is very intermingled. I have friends that cast hosts for TV shows that will sometimes ask if I know anybody new that they should see and I'll recommend people to them. Um, and these are voiceover people that are getting hosting opportunities. Mm -hmm. I will ask other people for requests and sometimes they'll send me on camera people or somebody will email me from a class saying this person really has voiceover potential. So everyone you know is a potential contact. Um, to reach out to agents, First of all, that doesn't mean instead of pursuing it on your own. Sure. Keep putting yourself out there because the more you book, even the more you're getting seen if you're not booking, makes you more viable. Right. Um, keep, you're, a lot of people are going to hear 
I'm sorry, no, a lot in the beginning. But it's not necessarily a permanent no. People change, things change. As you do more, as you do a stage show, as you take a class, as you meet people, send out an update. Not every day, don't go crazy about it, but um, every few months, here's an update. Took class with so-and-so. If you know somebody who knows somebody, Ask their advice. Some people love to be contacted. Some people don't. Some people, it's better to be contacted through your friend that knows them. Right. Um, yep. Yeah, have the demo ready. Have the resume ready. Anytime you do a spot, if if at all possible, get a copy. Find a link. This should all go on your website. Be searchable. Mm-hmm. There's also more and more and more agents and managers coming onto the scene now because the like you said, the business is growing so rapidly. Mm-hmm. Um, there are agencies that are in Canada now that are starting to branch out right. into the United States. Uh, there are people that leave management companies and start their own company. These people are all building rosters. Right. Um, yeah. And if you get in front of somebody and it doesn't work out, nobody's going to say, no, I hate you. Never talk to me again. Right. <laughs> it's just, I'm sorry, at the moment, I don't have anything for you, but in another moment, maybe I will. Mm-hmm. Um, that's always an important part of the thing. game, uh, too, is to remember that long. There's a, it's a long game. It's mm-hmm. a you know marathon, not a sprint. Yep. I was even watching Shark Tank last night. I don't know if you watch it, but yeah. I love that show. <laughs> um, and one of the investors in it, there was a, a flower company that had come on and they had pitched to them, and, and they didn't get any takers. You know, everybody passed. Um, and they did a little update on them. And what happened with this company was they didn't give up. They kept moving forward. And one of the sharks was getting married, needed a flower company, said, you know what? I remember these guys from yeah. the show. Let me hire them. These people did an amazing thing. He went back. He revisited. And he ended up investing in them later. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's not limited to Shark Tank. It's, you know. Um, it's a human investment. It's an emotional investment. Rosters change, needs change, things change, time change. Um, just because there may not be an opportunity today doesn't mean there won't be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So expand your network. I don't know if I totally answered your question. (laughs) No, I think you did. Yeah. I think we, we dove into exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of a nebulous thing, so it's fair to say that, you know, there's some, uh, fuzzy edges to it, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's there's still a lot of info there, and and um, it's a, mostly about persistence. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and 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 also keeping keeping up to date with your own stuff. So like, of course, you're going out there and auditioning and things like that. But you want to, even if that's not necessarily happening right now, how can you keep up on your skill? How can you, you know, do you keep rehearsing it or you know finding copy that you can read or whatever and you know putting stuff down and and as you say practice that acting side and then direct it later and then you know go Hmm. back and forth so that you can get a little bit more familiar with that so when the time calls you're not totally out of uh out of the loop or or unrehearsed you're ready to go yeah keep practicing and you know honestly be interesting Learn other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> uh, get really familiar with your equipment. You know, you should. It seems, it seems a little weird and a little Jedi to say this, but sort of be one with your recording equipment. I've heard people that are really, really great voiceover actors. They book. They're terrific. But I get their home auditions, and I can hear you were kind of concerned about the equipment with this. Right. You were kind of probably looking to make sure it was loud enough. You are worried about another room. That needs to not be a thing. Mm. Uh, Keep up with the equipment. Know what's going to make you your best you without distraction. Mm. Well Um, said. Keep up with that. And in the meantime, want other stuff. Honestly, I I have periods of time, sometimes two weeks, and I'm not that busy. Mm. I have other times when I'm really busy. I have hobbies. (laughs) You know, and it makes you interesting and it connects you with other people and uh, it, it just expands you as a human. Is that weird? <laughs> no, absolutely. I, you know, and I think uh, and I've spoken to uh, industry professionals in the, you know, on camera or on stage world that, that say very much the same thing. I mean, acting can't, should be a very passionate part of your life, but it can't be the only part. And, uh, you know, you got to ha- have a rich life outside of the business in order to actually bring that richness back into the business. Um, mm-hmm. and that's important. So to yeah. wrap things up, Andy, uh, 
what where first of all where can people come find what you're all about and all the things that you do and also if they want to take classes with you if they want to work on a workshop with you uh where can they find you uh oh well i have um a few classes i actually i teach at one-on-one in new york uh yeah. i have a five-week class that i do for them uh, I teach over at, uh, for Cast Events NYC, over at Ripley Greer. I do some intro classes. I do two intensive classes a month, which are, it's a full day, um, one to six, where we cover an awful lot of stuff. Um, right. And yeah, and I love it. Those are, those are the mainstays. Um, and my website is currently down at the moment after all this talk about websites and getting yourself out there (laughs) but it is actually voiceoverclass.com and it it will be uh back up soon (laughs) and where can people find you maybe on social media or something like that if they want to follow what what's going on Uh, i am on facebook uh i am on twitter um at uh, my twitter handle is at shiny noggin s-h-i-n-e-y n-o-g-g-i-n oh great uh (laughs) <laughs> so uh so i do i try to keep up with that as much as i can facebook i'm always there um yeah that's uh that's my social media and uh, if you google me there's other stuff that pops up outstanding yeah well andy thank you so much for your time man and uh you know coming on sharing your experience and uh your insight i mean i think it's super valuable uh you've been in the industry uh, long enough to see it change, to see it shift, and to see where it's going, and um, that's that's powerful, and it's and it's a lot of insight into a world that sometimes we don't get a get a peek into. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. This is great. You can find all the resources for this episode in the show notes at actorceo.com slash 77. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to the Actor CEO podcast on iTunes and at actorceo.com.